Hello everyone and welcome back to Tesla Ryan. The video today is going to be the first video in a series reviewing adapters for the Gen 2 Tesla Mobile Connector. The NEMA 515 adapter from Tesla is going to be the first one in the series and will provide a baseline for all the other adapters since this is the one supplied with every new Tesla vehicle. The testing will be performed on a Tesla Model Y at 50% battery level and charging up to 90%. This 40% of charge should allow us to extrapolate how quickly this adapter can charge the vehicle and how well it performs. The video will be broken down into several parts of the testing. Build quality, electrical performance, and thermal performance. Up first is build quality. This adapter is built very solidly and fits snugly into the mobile connector. While not the thickest wiring they could have used, it seems sufficient for the low load that this adapter will be carrying. Length is a bit on the short side, but flexibility is decent, which should allow for some ample room to angle sideways from a horizontally mounted outlet, but a vertical mounted outlet may cause some issues. The plug itself seems to be well made and is inseparable from the cord and body. The electrical performance data was gathered via the Tesla API using Teslify. If you're a new Tesla owner and you love data, I definitely recommend subscribing to Teslify to get all sorts of cool info about your car in real time. It saves this data to Teslify's cloud service and you can go back and see historical data anytime you'd like. I'll be doing a how-to walkthrough guide on Teslify in the future and also feel free to use the referral code I linked in the description below if you wanna give it a try. Now, back to the electrical performance for our testing. The voltage was well maintained, starting off with 121 volts and averaging around 118 volts under load for the 26 hour and 58 minute charging session. At 12 amps, this adapter supplied the vehicle with an average of 1.42 kilowatts and 4.72 miles of range per hour of charging. During the session, the charger consumed 38.35 kilowatt hours of electricity and added 31.41 kilowatt hours to the battery itself giving an overall efficiency of 81.9%, which is really good for a 120 volt charger. Side note here, the lower the power of the charger, the less efficient it will likely be. This is because of losses incurred from converting AC power to DC power, the car's charging equipment itself, coolant pumps to keep the battery temperature stable while charging, and other factors as well. Battery percentage gained per hour was around 1.48%, so if charging with this adapter from 0% to 100%, assuming no slowdowns after 90%, this would roughly take 67.43 hours or two days and 19 hours to fully charge your Tesla. Finally, the thermal performance. I planned this video using the FLIR app to measure the thermal data points using a time lapse and export that file but FLIR updated their app the week I was gonna start production and remove the time-lapse feature. After a lot of searching around for an affordable solution, I settled on using the Corsair Commander Pro to record the data points. This device connects to a PC and takes a temperature measurement of up to four thermal probes every five seconds. I attach these temperature probes to three points on the adapter and charger itself. The plug that's connected to the wall, the cord from the plug to the mobile connector, and the body of the mobile connector itself. A fourth probe was suspended away from the charger to measure ambient temperature. Temperature measurements were taken in Celsius every five seconds for the duration of the charging session. As the charging ramped up, we can see the temperatures start to rise very quickly on all parts of the charger, but the quickest on the plug itself. These eventually level off and trend nicely with the rises and falls of the ambient temperature. The average ambient temperature during the test was 32.68 degrees Celsius, with the plug, cord, and body average temperatures as shown here. Since the temperature numbers don't mean a whole lot out of the context of the ambient temperature, I included the numbers for their temperature over the ambient temperature as well. The plug stays in the lead over the ambient as expected, with the body coming in second and the core to close third. So there you have it, a quick review of the Tesla NEMA 515 adapter. This well-built adapter performed very well in some exacting conditions and managed to maintain a rather impressive efficiency. 
I'll be listing all of the relevant values for comparison on this chart, and I'll add additional adapters as I review them with one big comparison video at the end of the series. Next time, I'll be reviewing the NEMA L515 adapter from EVSE Adapters, so stay tuned and please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and have a great day.